Hi, my name is Rachel and I'm the Society's Coordinator at MDXSU. Hi, my name's Andre and I'm the Vice President for Art and Design, Media and Performing Arts at MDXSU and I'll also be looking after societies this year. This video is for your website training. The aim of this video is to give you all of the information that you need to successfully use the MDXSU website. Our website is the primary place for students to go if they're interested in joining or finding out about our societies, which means it's a great way of reaching new people. It is extremely useful for societies as there are lots of things you can use it for. Students can sign up through the website and join your society, including paying for membership if required. You can also maintain a list of members and contact details, and then send down email to all members, or certain demographics and membership. As well as this, you can set up events, charge for tickets, and sell society merchandise. The first step is to sign up on the MDXSU website. This is something that all committee members must do. To do this, go to www.mdxsu.com and click at the top of the screen where it says sign in. The login details to our website are not the same as your UniHub login. Enter your email address, so we recommend signing up with your university email address so that the system knows you're a registered student. And then select the I'm new here option and then click register. An activation link will then be sent to the email address you registered with. If you can't find the email in your inbox, then check your junk or spam folder. Once you've received this email, click on the activation link. This will then open up a new tab where you must enter some personal details to complete the registration. Make sure you fill in all of these fields and click complete registration. You should now be all registered on the MDXSU website. If you have already registered your society with us, we'll set up a page on the MDXSU website specifically for your society. In this case, we've used an example society, the Cat Appreciation Society, or CAS. Really, Rachel? The first step is joining your society on the website. MDXSU will make the president of the society an admin on the website, and it's then down to them to add the rest of the committee. To do this, log into the website and go to your dashboard. From your dashboard, you can do lots of different things which we'll cover later in the video, but for now we'll focus on making your fellow committee members admin. If you go to your user groups, you'll see three different user groups, admin, alumni and current members. Admin are those members who can edit the society page. This should be your committee members. Alumni are members whose memberships have ended, and current members are those people who have joined your society online. To give your committee admin rights, click on admin and make sure the drop down box is set to current members. Start typing their name into the search box and select the correct person. If you can't find a committee member, it's because they haven't yet joined the society online. Then set their membership expiry date as the 31st of July 2016. Click on add members and they should appear below as admins. So this is the front page of CAS. As you can see, we've got some text, video and links to social media. So if we want to edit this information, we need to click on the little pen icon under Configure Group on the dashboard. This will then take you to the back end of your group page. The main sections that you can edit are your society information, your logo and your email. To edit the main bulk of information which appears on your page, click on the Edit tab at the top. Here you can change the name of your society and edit the description. Your society will have an account number, or nominal code, which will appear here. Please do not change this. You can also set the email which will be used for the outgoing messages you send from the website. To change your logo, go to the Group Logo tab at the top of the page and click on Upload New. You can then choose a file from your computer and upload it. Please ensure that the file is a .jpeg, .png, .gif or .bmp. Your new logo should then appear on the website. Remember to save any changes you've made at the bottom of the page. To allow students to join your society through the website, you must first create a membership type. Here you can see the membership types set up for CAS. There's a membership for non-students, a membership for premium students, and one for MDX alumni. This can be a free membership or a paid one if agreed by the SU. To do this, follow the same steps as you would to edit your main page. 
and click on the pen icon under Configure Group on the dashboard. Go to the Membership Types tab and click Add Membership Type. In the category box, select the type of membership, for example, Alumni, Associate Member and Standard Member. Select the length of the membership. For this example, I'll set it to one year. I'm choosing to have a free membership for CAS, so we'll set the price value to zero. Select to have the membership available online and write a description for your membership type so that students know what the membership is. For example, I put that this is a free membership. Make this eligible for everyone or a specific user group. I've selected everyone. And then save. To view your members, click on your user groups and then go to current members. In here, you can see a list of your current members. Unfortunately, CAS only has three. To send out a group communication, return to your dashboard and click on group communication. Emails are known as campaigns on the website, so you'll be presented with a page to create a campaign. You can put in the name of the email, for example, introductions email, and the purpose, introducing ourselves to our members. Recipient criteria is where you choose who receives your email. Most of the time, you'll want all of your current members to receive the email, in which case you should check the box which says user is a member of all and in user groups type current members. You can add in extra criteria above that, for example all members who are between the ages of 18 and 30. Clicking on show target audience will show you the number of people who the email should reach, which is really useful. Now you know who it's going to, you can start writing your email. Choose the email address which the email will be seen to have come from. Then choose your email subject header and write the main bulk of your email. Click send and your email will be sent. To see if your email has been sent, then click on the group past campaigns tab. Here you can see if the email has been sent and how many people have received it. If your email is pending, it will appear in the group pending campaigns tab. Creating an event on the website is really useful, not only because you can create tickets, but also because your events will feature within the event section of our website, allowing you to get your events out to lots of students. You can also use the events function in a more creative way, for selling merch for example, or collecting signups for a campaign. If you are interested in using an event in an alternative way, get in touch. To create an event, go to the bottom of your dashboard to the Manage Events box, then click on the green button to create a new event. On the next page, click on Add Event. Here you can name your event. In this example, I'm creating a cat tea party event. Choose an event type and enter the start and end date slash time. Make sure you enter your nominal code. This can be found when you edit your page. For example, 3250 slash 123. In the description box, make sure you write a clear and detailed explanation of what your event is. If you wish, you can add a logo for your event. You must then add a venue and contact details, followed by the event capacity. Once you have filled out all the relevant sections, click Save. Once you've saved your event, you can add tickets by clicking on the Event Ticket Types tab and then adding Event Ticket Type. In this example, I'll be creating a free ticket for my tea party event, so I've suitably named my ticket Free Ticket. Even if you're not charging for tickets, having a free ticket means you can get an idea of numbers for your event and collect contact details for your attendees. I've set the price as free, but if you are charging money for tickets, then this is where you would enter the price. If you wish to launch tickets at a certain time or end them on a certain date, you can enter that information here. You can also set a maximum number of tickets a person can buy and a total number of tickets available, depending on the capacity of your event. Make sure that you add a detailed description of what the ticket is and what it is entitles the person buying it to. You can also set a related membership type, which is useful when you're doing separate tickets for your members, alumni and non-members. This would mean to buy a member's ticket, they have to be a member of your society. Click save and your ticket type is saved. You can then add other ticket types if required. Finally, if you have any questions, then please contact student events at mdx.ac.uk for anything events related or societies at mdx.ac.uk for anything website or society related. Thanks for watching and we hope you found this helpful.